My background is in breeding cereals. I was a commercial wheat breeder for 10 years. I'm still working on wheat and barley, but also some oil seeds, some fiber crops, some protein crops, and even some pharmaceutical crops. I think we're all facing the big, same big challenges. It's, it's how to grow more from less and maybe under, under tougher circumstances. On top of that, plant breeding, sometimes it isn't seen as the sexiest science, so it's, funding is, is always a challenge. And it's quite a slow process, so getting funding that lasts long enough to see the project through to the end is, is difficult. All of our uh, new solutions are hopefully going to have built-in disease resistance, pest resistance, um, tolerance to heat, heat stress, drought stress, water logging. Um, all of those things are at the back of our mind and, and it's kind of understanding the biology behind them and, and bringing that into, into the varieties of the future and knowing how to grow them. A few years ago, we were working with some of the wild relatives of wheat and crossing those into, into cultivated varieties. And we expected to see lots of wacky things, lots of uh, different types. We didn't expect any of them to actually be any good on, on the first look. And the yield of some of these was absolutely fantastic. So they brought these other things along, but they, they also brought genuine yield improvement. And realizing that you could perhaps be a bit braver in the crosses you make um, that aren't market focused, but still see these big improvements. Uh, that, that was a real eye opener. Not just tied at the lab bench or, or stuck at the office, very rarely in the lab these days, but I spend a lot of time in the field in the summer, a lot of time in the, in the greenhouse in the winter where I am today, and looking at, at different colleagues who come from different backgrounds, trying to knit all of those strands together to, to answer the big questions is, is really satisfying. It's when you, you see something that you've kind of had a hunch about and you select it one year, you grow it the next year, you wait most of the year to see the result and then actually uh, it does what you were hoping. That's really exciting. So when something comes good and it's there in front of you and you can visualize it in the field and then you have a leap of imagination and you think, well, what if the whole field was, was like this? I think my proudest moments have been standing in the middle of a field and all you can see around you is something you've created. I think that's, that's fantastic. The thing that makes NIAB different to other research places I've worked is that uh, it's sort of science with mud on its boots. So it's very much in touch with what growers need, the answers they need. It's in touch with what the plant breeders need and it's in touch with almost what the whole supply chain needs. It's not just about production for production's sake, it, we've got to be much smarter about that. Um, so the area of bringing in more stable yield and more resilient varieties and varieties that can deliver nutrition better um, but have a, a smaller footprint in, in terms of growing. Um, everything's moving in, in that direction, I think. Um, and I'm really excited to be involved in that. It's a brilliant time, I think, to be getting into crop science. There are these big challenges and they're fundamental challenges for humanity. So there will be a need for your skills. My advice would be that it sometimes isn't the most glamorous activity so you, you have to have a mindset that can put up with repetitive dull tasks and then occasionally you'll have a flash of brilliance and it all makes it all worthwhile. I would encourage youngsters to get experience um, on farms or with with industry doing harvest jobs and that sort of thing. Get, get a feel for how everything fits together um, and maybe even if you can't get training in, in lots of different aspects, be aware of lots of different aspects. These big challenges, we need people with skills from all over the place. Um, so be aware of I don't know, robotics and machine learning and coding. Even if you're never going to do it yourself, you might have a, a good understanding of what it can bring to the solution. <laughs>